Coefficients of friction basically tell us how hard it is to overcome the frictional force that a surface exerts on an object, and they do this by giving us ratios. So the coefficients themselves are ratios of the frictional force over the normal force that the surface exerts. So if we have a box on a carpet, then the frictional force in the horizontal direction is what's going to be in our numerator, and the normal force pointing upwards on the box is going to be in our denominator. Now the frictional force would be the minimum force that's required to get this box to actually start moving. So if we attach a spring scale onto this box, and then we start pulling it in this direction, then the amount of force that's needed to actually get this box to start moving is going to be what's in our numerator here. And because both of these forces are measured in newtons, the newtons cancel out and give us a number that's actually unitless. And there's going to be two coefficients of friction that I'll be talking about today. The first one is the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is used to describe a system that's already moving, and the coefficient of static friction, which will describe a system that stays stationary. So another thing that you should keep in mind is that the higher the coefficient of friction, the harder it is to overcome its frictional force. So when you say that the coefficient of kinetic friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction, then that's telling us that it's easier to get an object to overcome its frictional forces when it's already moving, compared to when the object is just stationary. And that's because when the box is already moving across the carpet, then there's not enough time for the bonds between the box and the carpet to become really strong, as opposed to when the box is already, or when the box is just standing on the carpet, then there will be sufficient time for those bonds to form.